Hello guys, in this video we'll be looking at DNA results, predicted appearance, traits and GD match results of not a human, not a Neanderthal, not a chimpanzee, but this time a western lowland gorilla. Uh, this gorilla is named Katie, which is actually a very cute name. Uh, my little sister is named Kate, so uh, it's a female, it's a girl, and it is the pure, it is a purebred Congolese gorilla. It was actually genetically tested and on uh, admixture tests for gorillas it was determined to be a purebred Congolese gorilla. Western lowland gorillas, which is what uh, this gorilla was, um, are most common in Cameroon, Equatorial Guinea, uh, Gabon and the Republic of Congo, and she was from the Congo. Now, this is what she scores with my Nashakot tool for phenotype prediction. She's scoring dark brown eyes, uh, snub-shaped nose and black hair. Now, keep in mind that my Nashakot tool is made for humans uh, and not for gorillas or chimpanzees, so I don't think it's gonna work very well for uh, other gorillas and chimpanzees, but she was dark-haired and dark pigmented so i guess it did work out for her uh, what's interesting is she actually had a couple of uh, light pigmentation variants that are found in europeans such as uh, these two variants in tirp one which say the clint chimpanzee that i analyzed in the previous video also had these two variants so i guess it's something that's common between the, the chimps and the gorillas and she also had one variant for light pigmentation that the clint chimpanzee did not have which is kind of interesting uh, with snipper free she's predicted to have brown eyes black hair and black skin and moving on, on to traits, she had this very exotic A1A1 genotype in the TAC1 uh, variation in DRD2. This is a very exotic genotype for humans. And what's interesting is the chimpanzee that I analyzed in the previous video also had the same variation. And the Neanderthals, every Neanderthal or Denisovan genome that I've looked at had the same genotype here. And this is a super rare genotype for modern humans. So I'm thinking that perhaps modern humans evolved not to have this kind of a genotype in order to help us, like some advantages. It's, it's definitely got some disadvantages. This genotype got some real major disadvantages such as higher risk of ADHD and Parkinson's and you know a lesser amount of dopamine D2 receptors is not good for you. It's uh, bad for motivation, it's bad for a lot of things. And her genotype in Pro 319 Pro variant of DRD2 was uh, not so exotic. This is a very typical genotype for all humans, but quite atypical for Europeans. You see, Europeans, we have this uh, no-go mutation here. So we, where instead of CC, we would have AA here. Uh, but this is a gorilla, and uh, gorillas don't have homo sapien mutations, so she has CC. When it comes to genes for male pattern boldness, she actually did not have any of the, you know, homo sapien variations that increase the risk of male pattern boldness. So this makes me think that uh, balding and male pattern boldness in general is a uniquely homo sapien trait. In Comte's Valmet variation, she had the warrior with the IO genotype. The implications of this genotype is that she had um, a quicker reuptake of dopamine, which means less dopamine in the system, which means problems with att attention and motivation. However, uh, advantages in stress resiliency. I'm thinking this is just a typical, like, pre-European genotype for everybody, for Homo sapiens and for all the other creatures as well. And what's interesting is she also, just like the Clint chimpanzee, did not have derived OXTR, so she did not have the sociopath gene. Moving on to polygenic illnesses and traits, she actually had a very, very high, probably top 0.1% risk for bipolar disorder. Uh, she also had a very high risk for Parkinson's disease. Um, she also had a pretty high risk for type 2 diabetes. And she also had a pretty high risk for type 1 diabetes. And uh, she also had a pretty high risk for schizophrenia, definitely above average. And she had a uh, above average risk for coronary heart disease. And she also had a very, very high risk for asthma. Now. Uh, keep in mind that these are risk scores for humans, not for gorillas, you know, so for gorillas, for gorillas, it's probably completely different set of genes that are implicated in these illnesses. Anyway, moving on to admixture tests, this is what she scores with MDLP World Ancient Roots K10 from uh, Admixture Studio. She's scoring 99.2% archaic man. Uh, this archaic man category is very interesting because the Neanderthal, on this cal calculator is scoring mostly archaic man, the chimpanzee is scoring mostly archaic man, and the gorilla is also scoring mostly archaic man. So what's what's up with that? What is this archaic man really supposed to represent? Uh, on MZLP K23B, she's also scoring basically 100% archaic human. So I guess the conclusion we can draw here is that out of the human references, uh, reference populations on this calculator, this gorilla is most similar to archaic human reference population. And uh, this is what she scores with Eurogenes K13. Very interesting result. Overwhelmingly sub-Saharan. I think uh, if this calculator had an archaic human component, it would score probably archaic human component instead of the sub-Saharan African, like we've seen in the previous calculators. 
and uh, this is what she scores with Eurogene's K36. And the biggest category here is Pygmy, uh, but there is also a little bit of like non-African groups, such as the South Chinese, which is in, in black, and Oceanian, which is in purple. And uh, this is her result with Harappa World. Uh, this result is kind of all over the place. She's even so scoring some Northeast European, which is quite interesting. And with the Oracle, she's getting modeled as a mixture of South African hunter-gatherer plus pygmy. Uh, but guys, keep in mind that this the components here are meant to represent modern human ethnicities, modern human people. So obviously, this is not a uh, accurate result. Obviously, she's this gorilla is not a mixture of South African hunter-gatherer plus pygmy. You don't get a gorilla by mixing a human with a human. But uh, clearly, as you can tell, out of modern human ethnicities, this gorilla was most similar to various sub-Saharan Africans. And what's interesting, what's different from chimpanzee result is that here she's scoring mostly Khoisan category on the African calculator. She's not scoring a lot of pygmies, and she's scoring a lot of Khoisan. Khoisan is the component that Neanderthal was scoring, whereas the pygmies were the component that uh, the chimpanzee was scoring. And with the oracle, she's getting modeled as a mixture of um, Kong, which is um, South African hunter-gatherer plus pygmy. So the majority here is, in, in terms of humans who resemble her the most, it's South African hunter-gatherers. But let's return back to the MDLP K23B result and discuss it a little bit. Because I think the reason she's scoring pygmy and various sub-Saharan African populations is because these are the populations of modern humans today who resemble uh, these ancient archaic humans the most. But if you run her through a calculator that has an archaic human category, she's scoring overwhelmingly archaic human. For example, on MDLP K23B, she's not scoring any pygmy, she's not scoring anything else, pretty much anything else other than archaic human. So clearly, archaic humans are more similar to her than African groups. Anyway, leave a like if you enjoyed this video. You can download her DNA in 23andMe format from link, which is in the description. Keep in mind that the downloadable file is in human DNA format, so although the genotypes are accurate, the locations are not. The locations are fitted to a human reference genome format, which isn't even that big of a deal. It's just a formality and a necessity for the file to be compatible with GDMatch and other services for human DNA. Uh, consider downloading her raw file and subscribing to my channel. Thank you.